Pencil, online. HPG connection, online. Educational module, online. All systems, nominal. Hello, class, and welcome to On the Origin of Battlemex podcast, episode 10. Today we are talking about the Ymir. It is a Larian design, and it is their first homegrown design, and it comes with many unique quirks because of that. I am your host, Brent Stewart McKee. My co-hosts are... I'm Joshua. I'm Jeff. Now, Jeff, when I was editing previous episodes, I realized I made a error in our previous recording, and I forgot to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself and explain your background with the Battletech universe. So why don't we rectify that now? Um, so I'm, I'm reasonably new with Battletech. I've been aware for, about it for quite some time. My initial introduction was through the, um, the animated TV series back in the 80s. Um, I've played a lot of the PC games, Mecha Commander... MechWarrior 2 and the subsequent ones, the latest Hairbrain Screams games. So I recently sort of got, got into it, started playing a lot of Mega Mech. I've never actually played Tabletop itself, so I'm still sort of getting familiar with all the mechanics associated with that. And also I'm starting to read the books now, to, so it's a very deep and interesting like genre I'm getting into. Yeah, yeah. The, my, my greatest downfall, especially with this podcast, is probably my knowledge of the law, so that's, you know... That's all right. You need to have somebody to ask the questions, right? Yeah, and, and I'm learning as I'm going. The Ymir is a Larian Commonwealth design, and it comes with a design quirk of being stable, which is not a bad thing for an assault mech to have. Yeah, uh, you want a stable platform when you're firing weapons. It's one advantage going prone as a rifle shooter or driving a tank gives you. So the first model to be seen is the BWP X1. And why is it called a BWP instead of something more similar to its name like all the others? Uh, because the Lyrans were very literal when they uh, initially laid it out. And it's BWP stands for Bipedal Weapons Platform. So being incredibly creative with that name. I guess it's not too uncommon when you're early in the prototyping stage, you have a concept you're building towards, in this case, a bipedal weapons platform. And then it's only after you've got a working prototype and are starting to show it off that you come up either with a cool code name or production name. And in this case, that's exactly what happened. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. So the Ymir is actually named after the Frost Giant of Mythology, so that's the final name they gave it. So after the Commonwealth pulled off Operation Prometheus, they started to reverse engineer the Mackie, and then the next goalpost was to create their own unique chassis to counter the Terran's monopoly on new mechs. In 2462, Coventry Defense Conglomerate rose to the challenge with the Ymir, and using the Mackie as a starting point, they shaved as much as they could from the chassis, rebuilding it and streamlining it it and to provide the mech with a larger array of weapons to provide different firing solutions at different ranges. Yeah, this thing is a really balanced weapons loadout. So they went with the smaller, more reliable LRM-5s with the idea of maintenance and upkeep in mind in order to keep them battlefield ready. And I mean, for an early design, having a redundancy in your weapons is not a bad idea because you don't know how reliable they're going to be, how often they're going to break down. Oh, absolutely. So one of the problems that this model suffers from is it has insufficient shielding on the flamethrower, and it has some heat issues because of that. Yeah, and it's interesting to note that... The, uh, the flamethrowers on the prototype Ymir are not the traditional battle mech flamethrowers that feed directly off the fusion reactor, but they're vehicle flamers. So they're more like what we would be familiar with in the modern era. Fuel tanks, compressed air, igniter, same thing you'd kind of see going all the way back to trench warfare in World War One. Yeah, and the reason they went with that is because, you know, this is still new technology and they were worried about tapping into the fusion fusion reactor directly, much like in the real world, early semi-automatic rifles tend to be blowback instead of drilling a hole into, into the barrel to vent gas like we do now, because at the beginning, they were afraid that that would cause the barrels to rupture similar situation here. They were afraid that tapping into the fusion engine and siphoning off some of that plasma would cause the reactor walls to be destroyed and wreck the machine. It also harks back to your redundancy thing too. Like if it's having their own self-contained units also makes life a lot easier too. 
So because of the issues it has, it was shelved for 10 years while the design was refined and improved upon. It has the design quirks of being obsolete in 2480, poor cooling jacket on the large laser and the flamer, and of course it's a primitive tech level chassis. So it comes with all the design problems therein, the drive, the armor, the cockpit, resulting in a battle value of 1,194 and a point value of 34. The weapon loadout of the Ymir BWP X1 is it has two LRM5s in its right torso, four SRM2s in its left torso, one large laser in its right arm, two vehicle flamers in its right arm, and one AC5 in it in its left arm, which is a very solid assault mech loadout, especially for this era. And it's got one ton of ammo for each weapon type, except for the SRMs, which has two tons of ammo. Yeah, pretty solid for a primitive mech. So an important note is that there is a discrepancy currently on Sarna on its battle value amount. Sarna lists the battle value as 1212, but as we've mentioned earlier on master unit list, it is listed as 1194. Yeah, and fortunately for Coventry, even though they opted not to take this initial prototype into service, they did show enough interest in ongoing development that Coventry continued working on and refining the design until they were able to leverage more modern materials and produce the uh, Ymir BWP-2B in 2475. Mm -hmm. So after it got a little more time in the oven and its performance was increased... After 13 years of development, Coventry was able to unveil the BWP-2B Ymir, which takes advantage of modern technology, so there's no more primitive engines, primitive armor primitive anything it keeps pretty much the same armament though it still has the large laser the auto cannon 5 the four srm 2s and the two lrm 5s but the vehicle flamers have been replaced by a small laser the full-sized modern engine allowed them to bump the speed up from the 35 or 54 kilometers an hour of the original prototype to 46 or 64 kilometers an hour and the armor remains roughly about the same at uh, 168 points total but because it's modern armor the tonnage used by the armor drops from 15 and a half to 10 and a half and it can sink 16 heat yeah which makes it pretty good at handling the uh, the heat load it has as long as it's able to maintain bracket fire it should handle it quite nicely so the idea of the 2b was for it to be rolled out and replace the Mackie in the Commonwealth's military and they started by distributing it to uh, loyal and prestigious units and it was initially successful but it soon faced more competition as more mech designs emerged onto the market and were being produced. The battle value for this guy is going to be 1289 and the point value is going to be 36. After distributing the Ymir as kind of a trophy mech, national pride mech to the Royal Guards and other elite units, Coventry developed a second variant, the 2E, in 2478, after three years of production on the 2B. And they basically touted it as a more powerful, upgunned version. Trades the large laser and the AC-5 for a pair of PPCs, swaps the four SRM-2 racks to a single SRM-6 rack, and trades out the LRM-5s for a single LRM-10. They were able to add an extra half ton of armor. They went from eight heat on the large laser and one heat on the AC-5 to 20 heat, so more than doubled the heat of the long-range firepower without increasing the heat capacity. Yeah, no compensation for that. In the lore, you're always running hot anyway, so jumping from from 13 points of damage to 20 points of damage that's a solid upgrade you're gonna run hot anyway and you can still not fire one of your ppcs and still be hitting twice as hard as your ac5 but definitely have to manage your heat even more carefully with the 2b absolutely but i can see why the heat management issues made this an unpopular choice yeah and then when you've got you know terran hegemony other lyran mechs other mechs from other nations coming online you know and you're only still almost 100 years out from the star league i guess 2570 about there yeah so you know it's gonna it sticks around for a while but eventually as 
more potent weapon platforms come online, it just gets relegated to second line and they eventually stop producing it. Mm -hmm. Well, it has a battle value of 1393 and a point value of 36. And after that, we didn't see it for quite some time, but it reemerged with the model BWP-3A. Yeah, and this is a closing days of the Star League, resurrect the flagship mech of the Lyran Commonwealth as nationalism sweeps throughout the inner sphere. Symbolism is important. You have the ability to take advantage of 300 years, 250 years of weapons development and really make this mech more practical. I think it really shines in this model. This one I really like. This is the one I'd consider. So the weapons loadout for this model is it has a large laser in the right arm, a large laser in the left arm, a SRM-6 with an Artemis 4, an LRM-10 with an Artemis 4, and a medium laser in the head. And to offset all of that heat, despite it downgrading from the PPCs to large lasers, you've got 16 heat sinks, but now they're double heat sinks. So you're able to sink 32 heat. That's going to handle that no problem, because with an alpha strike, you're looking at 27 heat. With a run, that puts you at 29. This is a, a pretty straightforward redesign. Drop the PPCs to the large lasers saves you four tons. You spend a ton of that on both the SRM and the LRM-10 to give them Artemis, which significantly enhances their reliability. You spend another ton on that medium laser, and then your remaining ton is spent to bump the armor up even more from the 11 tons on the 2E up to a full 12 tons. And then you've got those 16 heat sinks which you've turned into double heat sinks and yeah now you've got a very cool running but slightly shorter range and slightly less firepower than the original well i think the fact that the large lasers don't have a minimum range is also a benefit oh definitely because when you had those two well when you're the ac5 and the, and the ppc or the two ppcs you're talking about a three hex minimum range on those so two hex minimum range on that ac5 so you've got no minimum range now so you can keep firing those large lasers all the way up to point blank range and you're not going to overheat doing that your lrm 10 has now got artemis so that kind of boosts the firepower up a little bit at long range to make up for the fact that you're trading down from ppcs to large lasers and then your srm6 is just straight up more powerful with the artemis mm -hmm. seems like it could be a pretty solid brawler sort of make it's got good mobility for the weight too yeah, 64 kilometers an hour still. I don't think this is a stellar, right home about it, amazing kind of assault mech, but it, for a 4.6, 90 ton assault mech, this is, this is pretty solid. And you don't have the complications with the XL engine too. That's always yep. a bonus. I don't know why, but for some reason I feel like this mech would be right at home on Solaris 7. Something about its profile, I don't know. I mean, it's... it's not very flashy, but it's got the loadout to uh, deal with the more confined spaces on most of the maps, and the LRM is going to be a bit of a bother on most uh, Solaris maps. But you know, you still got a couple where there's more open space, and you can engage. I just feel like the shoulder pads have a lot of canvas that can be used for paint jobs and things. You know? Plenty of room to put your sponsors on there. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. The cockpit's an inter interesting sort of design too, sort of like that old school sort of like sloped cockpit like almost like a fighter fighter pilot absolutely it definitely is reminiscent of a jet plane or fighter definitely feels like it's meant to have aerodynamics in mind yeah i think it's a good kind of visual cue that this is a fast 90 ton mech mm-hmm because uh, a 4.6 movement profile is almost as fast as you can get. Actually, I think it is as fast as you can get with a standard engine on a, an assault mech. So it's got a battle value of 14.91 and a point value of 38. Yes, yeah, so there's only one notable mech warrior for the Ymir. Probably because this is a, a fairly limited design. It only really showed up in uh, TRO 3075, Primitives 5, and the new uh, Succession Wars TRO. And the notable pilot we have is Leutnant Laura Finster. She was actually not a Lyran by birth. She was born in the Rim World's Republic. Her world was annexed shortly before the fall of the Star League. She was part of the first Succession War battles to take over the Bolin Thumb from the Free Worlds League, even at the Lyran Commonwealth border and eliminate the Free Worlds League salient around the planet Bolon. She's notable because she destroyed a 
Merrick fighter making a bombing run against Commandant General Arik Hasseldorf's mobile command center. It's, it's actually what earned her promotion to Leutnant, and the general placed her in his command lance as a reward as well. So, I mean, that is one way to get yourself noticed. Yeah, saving a general's life generally improves your odds of promotion and uh, visibility. Yeah, kind of a lackluster notable pilot for a somewhat lackluster assault mech. It is noted that she is a very good shot, so that's not nothing. You gotta be able to bring down a fighter. No, absolutely, but and that that time frame is, has her piloting the three A variant as well. Our sources for today are Sarna, Battletech Battle Mech Manual, Master Unit List, Experimental Tech Volume Five, Thirty Seventy Five TRO, and Thirty Seventy Five Age of War Record Sheets. Shoutouts to the Sarna community and the Wolfnet community. We are supported by our Patreons at patreon.com backslash on the origin of battle mechs. Our social media on Twitter is at origin of mechs. We also have a dedicated channel on the Everything Battletech Discord. Feel free to stop by and say hi. If you have any questions, requests for topics, or wish to contact us, our email is on the origin of battle mechs at gmail.com. If you enjoy the show, I encourage you to let your friends know about us and to leave a review. Special thanks to my friend Laura for the intro and outro. Class dismissed. Everybody have a great day. Peace out, Mech Warriors. Catch you later. Module complete. System standby. Would you like to load the next module?